Hello, the Rebricker here. Okay, so we're done the first five modules of the ball factory, and I think now is a good time to start putting them on the board for the sole fact that there's some things you're gonna encounter in the first five modules that are extremely important to the timing and can cause a world of frustration. So to get started, we have a 48 by 48 board. So just a giant plate. And I'm just gonna move some stuff around here so you can see the load wheel that we built as part four, Bob as part five, the empty bucket mover. We have our load wheel turner, our main drive unit. Um, also have a L motor, a large motor, which we're gonna be setting up with the machine and two pins to hold it in place. So I'm gonna slide my board into place here as I shuffle stuff around. There's only so much room on the frame. Okay, to start things off, obviously our battery box we can put wherever that's gonna hook up to the motor. Our initial drive assembly is going to position like this. And if you notice here, the it's gonna fit right in the corner of the board. So just like that, and you'll notice this axle goes through the second hole and the rest of it just locks down. Now, if everything is correct, you should still have the exact same timing that you set up when we built this module. Okay, I'm running it backwards, so I'm running it forward. When we built this mod module, this is exactly the way you've had this set up. Okay, now I'm just gonna grab the gear and the axle so we can run it in test mode. It'll run slower we spoke about this when we were building the battery box, so let me just grab that gear and that axle. So you'll remember when we did the um, first drive assembly, we had an extra eight tooth gear and a three stud axle. We're just gonna put that in underneath this gear and we're gonna hook the motor up to this bottom gear down here. And the reason why is it'll run it at one third the speed so we're going to take the two pins in the motor and we're going to attach it to the axle at the lower point. There we go. Make sure it's in there secure. Everything else is all lined up and secure. Now if we take our battery box, now remember, because we've added one more gear, everything's going to turn in the opposite direction. So we remove the lock that we built we set to this side, and we've got to be very careful. The lock used to sit here, but this is where we want the switch to go, so now we switch it on, and you'll see everything runs nice and slow. Okay? So far, so good. So, next, from our part three video, we are going to add the load turner. So, this just attaches into that axle extension. Let me make sure I got a good angle on this for you. So we have our axle extension here, and this axle will feed right into there. Make sure it's all the way in. Now this is gonna line up your project. So this eight tooth gear has the axle going through it and it sticks into this beam, but not through all the way. And then everything else attaches right close. Okay, everything's in place. We switch it on again. Everything is functioning. Let's see here, if I can get that all the way. There's the edge of the board. So you can actually measure in exactly how many studs in this is. All right, again, not super difficult. Well, we'll just get this so that the, the load wheel itself is rounded on this side because this is how we're going to line up the wheel that we built in part four. So the wheel from part four, if you notice between two pins, it'll rest right in here against the round part of the wheel. So we'll just rest that right in there and right where it rests and it sits straight, so it's not quite straight. There we go, that looks more straight. We press down. Now, for those of you who want the exact numbers, 
we are exactly six studs from the edge over here. So six empty studs to the edge of the board. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine studs of space between the load turner and the load wheel pedestal. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this off because it gives us room to work. Because putting in Bob, as you can tell, there's a lot more drive assembly to putting Bob in. So what I'm gonna do here is grab all the parts that make up Bob and bring them closer. And the reason why is for ease of assembly, we're gonna pull them apart right here, right at that axle extension. And the reason why is we have to feed this axle with this gear on this side through the pedestal. <clears throat> and so to do that, let's just pull that. So this section, just like that, we can line everything up after. It has to go through there. And let's just go a little bit easier. We'll take the axle itself and we're gonna feed it through the first hole. So there we go. Through the first hole, we'll put the eight tooth gear back on and do, 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 do. where'd that extension go I just pulled off? Oh, I didn't. So it goes through there, connects to that axle and we'll just slide that through so we can connect up to this one and we'll slide that back and put that gear in place. Okay. So again, naturally this will, this will stop right about here. Not quite. There's actually one stud in between here. And this part can slide. There we go. Make sure we get all the pieces moved up. There we go. And this guy is just the base for that quick return mechanism. Okay. And for now, we'll just set this up so it's in line. How close it needs to be, we will gauge that afterwards. I figure if I show you how to set up the distances, then you'll be able to do this on your own and understand why it is the way it is. So, Bob himself comes in and that axle extension joins right onto the main drive line. Make sure it's pushed on there nice and firm. And again, to check our distance, we'll temporarily place the load wheel back on. Now remember, it sits closer to that side of the machine. So if you have a look here, it rests in against the wheel. And on this side, you've got to make sure that it doesn't crash into Bob. And so right where it drops down, Bob is four studs from the back and four studs from the back and lined up with that drive axle that he's connected to. So we can move this out of the way again. So dropping him into place, we know that for this, the way this mechanism lines up is it stands full upright. Both of them are upright. When both are upright, we know that their gearing is correct because they move in opposite directions. Uh, one more tooth. There we go. Both are upright. Okay. Dragging the battery box around. And this part that helps Bob turn goes in here. I'll move my hand in just a second as soon as I get this. Right there. 
So as you can see, there's one stud in between here, and there's one stud in between there. Okay. Technically, this should run. Let me just engage this gear. The timing may or may not be right. Odds of your timing being right are pretty slim. Ooh. This is why we run it slow. See, that just popped right off. This tells me that this should be further back. At least one stud. We'll start with one, and then we'll see how, how it works. Now you're gonna find, as you're setting this up, you're gonna encounter a lot of this. Ah, see, it doesn't come all the way. It goes all the way to the end. Not stressing here. But now, I never showed you how to set up the timings for this, so let me make an adjustment here. Let's say you're further back, right? A little bit wider, no big deal. Um, still sort of works. Let's make it extreme, because you need to understand what's going on here. So Bob doesn't go all the way, he isn't straight to pick up the bucket, and he doesn't come all the way forward to set it down. Now this will cause problems because it has to line up with the load wheel. So, by pushing this side in, on this side, this is gonna gauge how far back and straight Bob goes. So he's not quite making it far enough back, so we'll slide that in about the width of a stud. And now let's see, so come forward, still not coming far enough, we haven't adjusted that yet. Now he goes all the way back and straight with the back. Okay, so now for how far he comes forward, by pulling that in tighter, he'll come further forward. So let's have a look and see. Not quite to the edge. He's getting there, but not quite all the way. So let's pull it in a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Now, if you're taking, paying really close attention, you'll notice that Bob goes up, not when he needs to. So the buckets are gonna be coming at him from here. So when a bucket comes at him, he's supposed to pick it up, bring it over, set it down. So let's get him to where he's gonna pick up the bucket. Right there, he arrives. Now the bucket's gonna get pushed in. So. We've got to adjust the timing on this. So we're gonna roll that forward to just rest there. So when we run it, instantly he picks up, comes over, and sets down. So the back picks up, comes over, and sets it down. All right, this is actually going very well. Now, the biggest problem I've encountered, this arm here, when it's going back and forth, if your load wheel is not turning at the right time, it's gonna crash into the pins that are hanging down and that's not, it, it causes a world of frustration. So if you want, we can put this load wheel in now. So press it in there. The pins are resting nicely here. And so, if we run it, I already can tell that the timing's not right, but this is good so that you can learn. See what's happening? The wheel is turning while Bob is still putting a bucket down. And that's not gonna work. So obviously it's turning too soon. And you'll also notice here, well, I don't know if you can see it from this angle, but it's starting to crash into the pin. Let's keep running. It just made it by. So, What's happening now? Bob's coming in to drop a bucket. We want to make sure the load wheel doesn't turn. So, here we have room on this axle. Remember how I said we got room to adjust the timing. The wheel turns once it hits this small curved brick and that wall element that's in behind here. If we disengage this gear by pulling it out, just before the wheel turns, we can let the system run. Bob sets down the bucket. As soon as he pulls away, we're safe to turn the wheel. 
So as soon as he pulls away, we lock that gear back in, and if we watch, the load wheel turns. Mm, turned a little bit too late. That would probably work, it'd be okay. I'd be more comfortable if it turned a little bit sooner. So for it to turn sooner, we just advance this a little bit, lock that gear back in, and we run it. So now it turns while Bob's away. If you'll notice, it doesn't crash into the quick return arm. That arm goes back and forth, no problem. Nice and smooth. And effectively, we have set up the timing for the first five modules of this project. Now, there's a little bit to do with the main drive assembly because these two actuators moving forward and back are designed to move the, the bucket shifter at the end. And we can't really set up the timing for that until we get that in place. But the stuff we've done now is actually really difficult to do once everything's in place. So it's good we got that done. And I look forward to building the next couple modules with you. Actually, before we go, let's run this thing at full speed. So, we're looking good, our timing's good, nothing's crashing. We'll pull out our test gear and motor and the pins. We'll put them into the motor, hook it up. Now, remember, we've just pulled out a gear. So we're back to locking out the battery box. It's more important to lock it out when you're not running it in test mode because you don't have the clutch gear engaged. This won't do anything for you. It's not gonna protect your system. So you have to make sure that you always run it in the right direction. So now when we run it at full speed, start to see how this machine has come together and is working beautifully. So once again, thanks for watching. Look forward to finishing this project with you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. And if you want to be notified when the next module is ready to be built, please subscribe. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have within reason. We can get things adjusted and make sure it works beautifully. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.